All right, I'm going to keep this next story brief. You're going to see what I mean here in a second because it's a water park in Perth. They're clamping down on barely their swim there. Look at the diagram. Top left, no good. Top right, no good. You need to cover up fully with proper swimwear. It's Spy Adventure World in Perth. It's certainly dividing online opinion in terms of whether people should be told what to wear. We're going to get to the bottom of this one Aww. with Stella Magazine, Sarah Lamarquand and Six PRs, Oliver Peterson. Hello to you both. Hi, Tony. He's going to be pun city here. Uh, <laughs> Ollie, uh, should people be able to decide whatever they want to wear there? Are you visually offended by some of those options? Well, maybe call me old-fashioned, Tom. I don't really like it, but I wouldn't be banning it because Gen Z would say sun's out, bun's out, and that is exactly <laughs> what the global fashion designers are currently producing. Have a look online. Most of the bikini bottoms that are for sale these days, more than half, are this exact style. So you have the potential here of isolating a whole heap of your customers. Now, Adventure World isn't going alone. I believe it's Dream World and Wet and Wild on the Gold Coast have also banned similar swimwear. But, as I say, this may uh, cost the business's customers. And perhaps, Sarah and Tom, they need to have a quick look at Love Island to get a little bit more inspiration before <laughs> management start making these decisions. Yeah, well, I was going to say that if, you know, if they enforce this at Bondi Beach, I mean, the sand would be clear. There's more thongs there <laughs> than the, right. the Kmart bloody shoe aisle. Now, uh, <laughs> do, what do you think here? Are you, are you worried that this is sexist, that they're just target clamping down on women's rights to wear whatever. I mean, we don't see them enforcing it on Speedos. Actually, a few women have been saying, hey, come on, what about Speedos? So, you know, if it's good enough to clamp down on what the women are wearing, good enough for the men. The truth is, all swimwear is a little bit strange, if you think about it. You take the context out, the beach or the pool, and it's a little bit odd that people are walking around there with barely anything. But it's been going on for a long time, and I think that this story is absolutely ridiculous. I don't know what these parts <laughs> operators are thinking. I do think that it, body shaming comes into it a little bit. I think it's a bit troublesome to start. Where, where do you draw the line? If we start saying to people, you can't wear that, you can't wear that, you know, we rightfully condemn and critique other parts of the world that have very prohibitive, regressive policies about women in particular, what they can wear in public. Got to draw the line somewhere, though. A very thin line around the... Let's move on. <laughs> now, we all know you can be prosecuted for drink driving. What about this, though, if the drink is water? This is exactly what has happened. A guy called Brock Harris is from Bow Desert in Queensland. He copped a $173 fine and one demerit point for having a swig of water in his car on one of the hottest days of the year. Now, Ollie, uh, Harris was told, sipping from a, a water bottle behind the wheel, that this can be driving without due levels of care and attention. I mean, did you even know this was a law? No, I didn't. I think if you have a look at it, though, as well, Tom, he had a whole heap of bags and I think his car was a little bit busted up and maybe there were some uh, other visual impairments within his vehicle as to why the police maybe had to find a reason to pull him over and uh, issue this fine. But I'm gobsmacked by this, thinking that you can't drink a glass of water while you're driving. Uh, it does surprise me, that's for sure. It's only one demerit point, so I guess we've all got to really think about what we're doing behind the wheel, uh, whether or not it you know, could cause some sort of a distraction. Anything, as we know, can cause some sort of a distraction. So if it's going to start to fall into the realms of being dangerous or distracted, then you do have a problem. But just having a swig of water, what's wrong with it? Well, then it really opens a can of worms. I mean, what about having a sip of your coffee in the morning, mm. uh, having a chomp of the muesli yes. bar, whatever it may be? A lot of us would be very dangerous on the road if we didn't have that sip of coffee. Exactly. I mean, driving We're helping know, them. Half, <laughs> half away because we all know it's very dangerous. Look, I think it's got to come down to common sense, doesn't it? As Ollie says, presumably there were other factors at play here. You'd have to think so. But uh, we all know that, you know, using mobile phones is a no-go. But it, a lot of people have rightfully raised over the years when we're talking about mobile phone use in the car... Well, what about if you go through the drive-thru of a fast food store and you're there with the, the drink or the, the, you know, burger in hand? Uh, what about drinking water? Uh, what about playing with the radio dial? I mean, all of these things can be a distraction if you're not being sensible. So I think it's got to be a common sense policy, whether it's water or, or talking, even, you know, talking to someone. Have you ever been in a car with someone when they keep turning to you, the driver, to yeah, discuss and, like, and you're like, just look ahead. eyes on the road, eyes on the road. So again, I just think it's got to be common sense rather than a one-size-fits-all really draconian type policy.
policy. Yeah. All right. Well, just quickly, one more for you because a little celebration for royal fans this morning. Uh, Prince Harry used to be all smiles. It's all got a bit serious lately. Mm. But now he's sharing a few laughs because he's teamed up with his ginger double, Ed Sheeran, promoting mm -hmm. mental health awareness. Uh, look, it's been a bit of a torrid time of late, Sarah, for the, uh, for the prince. It's nice to see him at. Just chilling out it, a bit. It's good. And, you know, I think Harry has always been so endearing because a lot of people think that he's the royal with a sense of humour. I do say royal with a sense of humour in the singular sense because they're not necessarily known for a great ability to laugh at themselves. So I think Harry's going to win a lot of hearts back if he can be seen to uh, be tackling a very serious issue that, to his credit, he's been very outspoken about and very honest about his own battles with mental health, which I think is so important. But to be doing it with a bit of uh, levity and having a, a joke at himself, I, th I think it's going to help those opinion polls go back in his favour. Yeah, Ollie, do you reckon his PR team said, hey, let's stop suing people for a couple of days and maybe do something a bit positive and fun? Yeah, they probably did, and it's just nice to see him have a laugh with Ed Sheeran. I, I think they are the uh, the two greatest ninjas, gingers, I should say, on the planet. As the, as the father Combine of the a little ginger, ginger as well, <laughs> as the father of a little ginger as well, whose name's Edward. We uh, already call him Ed Sheeran, so uh, he's got somebody to look up to. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you go. You're, pre you're prepping him already. Great stuff, Ollie. Nice to see you, Sarah. Thanks for coming in.